perfect weather conditions, and Sardinia at its best, marked the first day on the water at the Giorgio Armani Superyacht Regatta, an event organized by the yacht club Costa Smeralda with the support of title sponsor Giorgio Armani. Norda 100, Morgana, leads after day one. It was a marvelous start for participants in the Southern Wind Rendezvous. Porto Servo is always uh, very nice for us to sail here in this water. And the conditions were perfect. Porto Servo, as always, is glamorous and, and the sight scene was, was beautiful. This is your weekly Global Sailing Highlights show, The World on Water, June 7, 2024. It was the sort of conditions that make racing sailors salivate, 18 knots true with 24 knots gusts, blue skies, temperate airs, a moderate chop for Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli, making it a stopped start kind of day with technical issues on the boat as the top end conditions bit. So fine-tuned are the AC-75s, that any tiny component that isn't absolutely 100% can mean the end of your day. Just like Formula 1, it's either all on or all off. Jimmy is showing his true Aussie heritage as he answers the interview's questions. We're here with Jimmy Spithill from Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli. You're helming on starboard side today. We were seeing gusts just over 20 knots. You're absolutely ripping. Went off along as the day came to an early end. Can you break it down for us? Yeah, we got a little bit of sailing and beautiful breeze out there. You know, we had a couple of changes inside the boat that no one can really see. And uh, yeah, we just came in. We wanted to make a few changes. We thought about going out, but we changed our minds and thought, look, we're just gonna we're gonna sort through a couple of things and then get the full day in tomorrow. Can you give us a hint as to what changes were made inside the boat? No. <laughs> so it was very stop and start earlier in the session. You were sailing for two minutes, stop for stop for a while, and then go back for another two minutes of sailing. Can you tell us what was going on? Yeah, we just uh, were stopping, just checking a few things out on, uh, on these things. But yeah, ultimately, it's just one of those days. You know, you have days sometimes, you've got a few little things here and there. And like I said, we could have gone out again, but we just thought tomorrow's forecast looks just as good, if not better. And we said, look, let's come in, let's get sorted for tomorrow, and we'll use the whole day. We saw the, uh, the rudder stock fairing open with the techs working inside. Was it a issue with the steering systems? No, nah, no, nah, steering was all good. We had a couple other things inside the boat. And uh, so when you actually did get sailing, you had, uh, started with a downwind, two boards down, lots of twists in the sail. What were you working on? Yeah, I mean, the two boards are something I think a lot of the teams are really looking at when the breeze gets up. So we're just working on the balance, sailing down, and then we got a, a pretty nice upwind run in on the way home. Do you think there's a chance of sailing downwind in the very strong breeze with two boards down in the racing? I think if you need control or stability at times, yeah, but it would really be on the top end because VMG, you, you pay a big penalty. But you see a lot of teams, we saw the Kiwis in New Zealand on the very top end using it a lot for bearaways and any time they got unstable, clearly roundups when the breeze gets up. So yeah, I mean that, that two boarding is, is definitely a feature for these boats when you start getting overpowered. And how much work is going into the, <coughs> into the systems, you know, when we're talking about uh, fast drops, slow drops, gravity drops, where's the work to be done? You just constantly fine tuning. It's, there's so many things you, you can change on the boat and the settings. It's, it's just a never ending kind of task that you have in front of yourself. And yeah, every day you go out, you try and fine tune it a bit, 
and then the conditions can change and you probably want to change the settings again. So tomorrow looks top end again, which would be great. So we'll, we'll definitely utilise tomorrow the full day. Jimmy, thank you for your time. No worries. Boris Herman's motto for the 2024 New York to Von D Transat was go big or go home. Boris said, it's super hard to make this kind of decision when you're alone. Here is an explanation for all the people glued to the tracker and wondering why Boris is going so far north. Hi, good evening everyone from Malizia Sea Explorer, day five in the New York Von D race solo across the Atlantic. I'm not pointing at all at Les Sables de Lisbon. I'm heading north at the moment. I read uh, an article today with some speculation about uh, why or why not I would do that. Um, well, it's it's complicated for sure, and uh, just so much um, I I see a fair chance uh, the route in the north is not longer. So that was stated uh, wrong in that article. Uh, the route is actually uh, a little bit shorter via the north. And uh, it has some potential, it has some risk. It has definitely more risk than the south route, uh, where Charlie is, he is in a very, very good position, but I can't get where he is uh, since, uh, since a while. And, um, <clears throat> and so uh, actually it's pretty tricky for me to, to actually make something good out of the south road route at all. Um, for me, uh, it is not gambling, it is, uh, with the information I have, the best uh, informed decision I could make with the tools I have. I spent a lot of time uh, routing with Adrena. Maybe I'm not a skilled weatherman, but um, I tried to do my best. Certainly I paid a lot of attention. I looked very closely at the different options and um, at one stage uh, you have to make the call. And, um, and, well, I could have made a call beforehand to, to keep it more safe. So, in a way, I regret that. I would have loved to have less excitement, uh, because this is pretty much up in the air, what's coming out of this, to be honest. Um, I see that consciously, like probably everyone else. Um, there are a couple of risks. Uh, attached to this route, uh, lots of high pressure and um, could pos possibly block uh, like tomorrow or in, in a couple of days uh, near the Irish coast. So um, at the same time my instinct very much wanted me to go this way because uh, with the uncertainty of the weather, weather models we had seen I wasn't feeling ready to invest straight away into the east uh, as much as Charlie did. So probably that was the rationale um, yesterday and uh, since, since uh, then uh, I put myself a little bit out of options. Um, could have maybe uh, last night uh, came back but now it's uh, I think it would be uh, complicated to try to do a south route for me. Well, it would be more certain, but certain, uh, according to my calculations, I would be behind a big portion of the fleet. So what's the point? Then I'd rather take the risk to go in the north. That's probably to ex explain my rationale. Um, it's not that I'm lightly giving up a second place. I would have been flattered to be able to follow uh, Charlie on his path uh, and I congratulate him for the great race he's doing. He is sailing an um, upwind race south of the high pressure and I am um, light wind downwind north of the high pressure but I have also go to go through parts of the high pressure so depending on the route we find tomorrow. Uh, the wind is a bit up and down now. We have some lulls where the boat slows down completely to 10 knots and it picks up again to 21. Right now we're doing 21 knots. Uh, it is pleasant in a way uh, that I like the Nordic um, vibe out here, the atmosphere. The, the sea looks almost silver 
and the sky is gray, but gray with a silver note. So um, I thank you everyone for following the race, uh, as always. Um, lots, uh, lots appreciated the messages I got. Um, thank you very much uh, for those thinking of me or about the situation. Uh, I invite you to, to join the excitement uh, of, of this route. It could potentially do something, but I don't promise anything. I'm fully aware of the risk. Um, I'm not just gambling. I'm, I, I, I thought about this a lot. I'm aware that this could be a disaster as well, but so it be. Um, eventually some wind will bring me home and um, the only hard deadline I have is um, the birthday of my daughter for which I want to be at home. This is still a few days away and the, uh, probably the other bottleneck is the food on board. Um, I'm running out of breakfast first but um, everything else should be fine. Oops big gust, the boat is healing over, so I better get back to it. Um, it is exhausting, I'm not bored yet at all. It is exhausting to be trimming and um, mentally the challenge is now for me to just accept where I am. It's total uncertainty. I invest a lot of work into this, a big 10, ten days of my life uh, full on uh, and I have no idea about the outcome. So that's quite uncomfortable. Um, and so I need to find some, some way around this, but I'm sure um, I can find moments where I settle in, where I put myself in a different place and uh, just try to not think about the race because there's more than the race to it. It is also appreciating being at sea. Oh, here start, starts the bouncing. Seeing a little um, sun ray like now, sparkling on the sea, that's beautiful, I will show you in a second. So uh, I, I try to just be a seaman, do my best, take it easy, and if the race I become 15th or 20th, I will try to have done uh, a happy sailor. And uh, I'm aware of the privilege of being out here, thanks to our great partners and the team. and. Um, and uh, I try to respect, uh, respect it, and not um, and, and and not be too too worried about the race itself. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Ciao. Talk tomorrow. Also out in the top range wind conditions in Barcelona with Luna Rossa was the American Challenger, American Magic Patriot. They also had their share of hydraulics problems but all in all they reported that the new boat was much lighter than their previous boat. They are very happy with where they sit. Lucas Calabresi, you're helming on starboard today on the new Patriot. First time we've seen the boat out on the water, it's very impressive. Can you tell us how different it feels to the old boat? Uh, well, yeah, obviously first, first official day, uh, it was pretty windy. And uh, it feels way more agile, really. You can, you can see the difference. And uh, yeah, I mean, there are some similarities, but overall, just, just way more agile and, and lighter. 16th day of recon. How close to being able to push the boat to 100% are you? I think we're getting there. Obviously, today was probably the windiest day. We said it was upper range and sometimes above the wind limit. But uh, we managed to, to do some laps, and uh, yeah, the boat, the boat felt pretty good. We saw 18 to 22 on the recon boat. It's probably a lot more at the top of the rig. What did you see? Uh, we saw. I saw. I think 24 was the max that I saw. The boat. Does the boat feel start to feel out of control when you when you're sailing? I, I think the boat's responding really well, and uh, if there is any more control that we need to get, it's just from the sailors that are on board. The boat's behaving really, really well. The systems are working really well, and uh, it's just up to us to get the most out of it. We saw some quite long delays in between stints. Was there problems on board? 
We had a little bit of a hydraulic issue, but it got fixed at the, the second part of the day. Over the last couple of weeks, we've had four boats uh, out racing in, in the off Barcelona here. Has the team been able to gauge any any sort of performance comparisons with the other boats? Uh, I mean, it's very it's very hard. Like some teams had like four cameras on, and obviously this place is quite one-sided, so it's really really hard, and we're not really lining up on the same tack. So yeah, it, it's pretty hard, but. Um, Overall, I think we're feeling pretty confident with the boat and day to day we're getting it to explode it more. Let's talk a little bit about communication on board the boat. What's the, what things are shared in the communication loop between the, the helming pairs and the trimming and flight control pairs? Well, the helms are sharing a lot of the tactical uh, situations and what's happening on the course. And uh, the trimmers are just making sure they are in sync with, with each other. So yeah, that's pretty much the big picture. The wind today, you said, was maybe touching 24. How, how much windier could you have sailed in, do you think? I mean, it wasn't that wavy today, so probably push a little bit harder, but it's just the, the more you push it, the riskier it becomes for the, for the yacht, and we don't want to damage it. So I think if it's outside the, the wind limits, we were very careful on how much we push it. Fantastic, Lucas. Thanks for sharing with us. Thank you. Beers, showers and flat beds. After almost four weeks at sea in the Clipper race, there was some very happy faces to be docking alongside in Panama's Flamenco Island Marina. Now, it's to get ready to transit the Panama Canal and into the last section of their round the world race. Hey Henry, how are you mate? Very good, good to hear your voice man, looking forward to getting in. Yeah, we're looking forward to having you in, uh, good to see you there. What can I say? I mean, it's a race. You go out to, you go out to win. You set it out to win, and uh, really, we knew that the wind was going to die. Um, and all we could do, all the most we could do, was try to get a big enough cushion between us and everyone else. That, and it worked. It worked. Um, so yeah, a lot of hard work went into it. Um, a lot of hard work trying to keep the boat moving whenever there's virtually no wind. But yeah, crew were brilliant. Crew were brilliant keeping the boat going. It's a long one, the longest race. We've been four weeks on the water together with the motor in time, I guess. Uh, it's a long race and it's been really, really hard. Yeah, we did a good job and uh, really happy for our team and really to be happy to be here. It was cold, it was wet <laughs> and rainy and then it got warm and hotter and hotter and hotter and then we were first place, then we were second place, then we were first place and then we ended up in first place. Yes! Go Jin now! <laughs> This, this race is one that can cause lots of uh, ups and downs, but we managed to get a little bit of a lead and maintain it, so that was uh, essential. But uh, yeah, it was a good race. Ever, I never heard a raised voice, uh, and everyone sort of gets stuck in. So it's brilliant. Yeah, great team. Yeah, so uh, it now appears that uh, first place on the podium overall is more of a distinct possibility than it was before we left. Uh, obviously, there's a long way to go. Uh, Inika and her team of Perseverance are very, very good. They've got their joker as well, so we've got uh, to work it out for us to maintain leads on the next three races. But it's all up to Inika really now. She's got that double whammy on the points, and if she can make that work for her, then she'll lead the way. But um, we're going to do our darndest to keep them from it. An amazing trip. We've had, we've had, you know, highs and lows. We've had uh, big seas, cold weather, unbelievably hot weather. Uh, so no, it's been great. Really good. Really good. Great experience and fantastic to come second. Would have preferred first, but really excited to be here. Get some air conditioning. Take a hot shower. Yeah, relax a little. <laughs> Um, basically, we finished on uh, the first finish gate right on the outside, and it just looking at the weather forecast after that, the, all the wind was out in the middle of the ocean, and so we were closer to the wind. We stayed right on the uh, right hand side and got the wind and had a great result. So BSP said they'd buy us a beer if we ever got a podium, so we're really looking forward to uh, well, just 
living up to what they are, what they'd hoped for. So uh, we're super pleased. You get your bit of seasickness at the beginning, and uh, and then people kind of get used to the 45 degree heel. Well, well, and it, you know, well, it, it was a difficult for, like first week and a half because it was cold yeah. and people didn't expect hey, it. Um, but then after that, I think oh, everyone got used to it. Everyone good. settled in so after the first few days, and yeah, it just worked out really nicely. I just joined for this leg, so it's fantastic. I really think it's fantastic for all around the worlders because they've been waiting for a while to get back on the podium. It felt like a great race. We really did our own strategy and it paid off in the end, so it's been fantastic. We all just gelled really quickly, the two watches, and uh, you know, we focused on performance and it paid off, so it's been fantastic. <laughs> Water and land, stage and regatta course, that is the Kiel Week. It is a shared journey of discovery with unique encounters and surprises. Let yourself drift and experience your very own Kiel Week moment. Anticipation is the best, the next Kiel Week awaits you from June 22 to 30, 2024. Die Kieler Woche 2024. Eine Reise. Einmal um die Förde und zurück. Ein Blick, Herzklopfen zu dieser einen Melodie. Ein strahlendes Lächeln, wenn wir über den Wolken schweben, unter uns das Meer in Blau getupft mit weißen Segeln. Kleine Momente im Wirgefühl der Stadt. Seele baumelt gelassen, Ballone im Blick. Das ist die Kieler Woche. Jede Sekunde in ihrer Einzigartigkeit perfekt. Wir freuen uns auf das Adrenalin-Gefühl, wenn das erste Mal das Startsignal tutet. Besatzung der Deutschfock freut sich auf die Besucher der Kieler Woche. Let's go! Wir sind dieses Jahr endlich wieder bei der Kieler Woche dabei und für uns als Band von der Insel, Insel Föhr, immer etwas ganz Besonderes. Es wird wunderschön, Leute, kommt alle vorbei und lasst uns einen wunderschönen Abend verbringen. Ganz viel tanzen und lachen. Und ich freue mich auf euch auf der RSH Fördebühne. Ja, genau das ist dein Leben. Hey, hier ist Philipp Dittberner und ich bin dieses Jahr auch dabei auf der Kieler Woche. Wir spielen auf der Rathausbühne. Ich freue mich wirklich sehr. Hey Friends, bin schon mega gehypt auf die Kieler Woche dieses Jahr und ich hoffe, ihr kommt wieder alle vorbei und wir werden noch mehr abreißen als letztes Jahr schon. Der Eta Radio Förderbühne. Was ich mich freue. 24.06. Kieler Woche, Schlagernacht, Rathausbühne. Was kann es Schöneres geben? Barcelona has been serving up truly momentous weather conditions for the past month and today was just another day at the world's most perfect office for Ineos Britannia who lit the afterburners on a memorable session in a garby sea breeze that peaked just above 20 knots, and a fairly choppy sea state that called for accuracy. Both teams looked sublime in the conditions, releasing the awesome power of their current generation AC-75s, and made sailing look not only easy but thoroughly enjoyable, a great advert for the sport. Times Olympic gold medalist Giles Scott helps fun on board side on Ineos Britannia. Giles, could you please could you please walk us through the day? Yeah, we uh, were a little little later off the dock this morning. I uh, had a few um, a few bugs to resolve with with one of the chase boats, but yeah, we got out there as the Garby Sea Breeze was firmly in, uh, and yeah, a real nice three hours of yachting around in. Perfect conditions, 15 to 20 knots, pretty flat water. Yeah, Barcelona put it put it on for us today. Today back to the legacy rudder. Is the short team making further modifications on it? Yeah, there's a few there's a few things being looked at on that rudder, and yeah, it's in in, in the shed today. So we had uh, yeah we had the, the, the shorter legacy rudder out today, which um, yeah which went well. Are the modifications going to be on the strut, on on elsewhere? Uh, you're gonna have to wait. You have to wait and see. 
Okay. Lots of differences in between the two routers. How much that is affect, does it affect the sailing on the water? Yeah, I mean the, the the yachts as a whole are pretty pretty sensitive to to to, to rudder balances in, in general um, with with the way the sail plan works and the, the way the the foils are orientated on the on, on the yacht. So yeah, getting. Um, Getting the, the getting the rudders optimised nicely is, a, I'm sure, a big ticket for, for every team. How good is the data you collect whenever you sail with the legacy rudder? Is it, is it highly biased or is it still useful? No, it's very very useful. I mean, ev everything's pretty pretty censored up. That you know that that rudder e equally so. Obviously, the uh, the other rudder is a is a, is a step on in, in generation from 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 the legacy. Um, but yeah, we you know. I think today showed that we had a great day out there sailing around and hitting good numbers. Today some non-organized crossings with Alinghi on one of the upwinds. Yeah. How much were you able to extend the distance from the first cross to the last one? Uh, oh, I mean, I think the yeah, it was uh, yeah, we had a little a little look at Alinghi as you say. We ended up on opposite tacks here and there, um, going upwind, and yeah, I mean, we you know we we feel pretty. Pretty good with where we're at with with uh, with our yacht, and, and to be honest, we've got to stay focused on that. It's um, it's pretty hard to tell where these other teams are at, and you know it's it's close, and we we just got to keep pushing. What is the what is the level of confidence of the team at the moment? It's good, yeah. Confidence is is, is high. You know, we think um, we've certainly got got a lot of a lot of work to do. We feel like we've got a lot of gains to make, and we're finding that hugely motivating, and that's where our focus is. Thank you very much. Thanks.